and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be beginning the process of turning my bedroom into a 1950s time machine. Quick note, please excuse the weird audio in the beginning of the video, I was having a mic issue but it only lasts for a few minutes. Now I do really like my room. I've been slowly making it look more and more vintage over the years, but there are a few things that I'd like to fix, one of the biggest being my accent wall. Now don't get me wrong, I love my accent wall, I think that it's very beautiful, but there's a few reasons that I'd like to change it. One of them being that while there are a lot of beautiful vintage pictures there, there's also a lot of modern photos that I don't really think give off the 1950s bedroom vibe. Another reason being that this house was built in the 70s, so it has textured walls. And pretty much everything that's on my accent wall has been taped there, so it doesn't not really like to stay very well and there's some pieces that like to fall off. It's not all very clean, there's quite a few places where you can see the tape very obviously, but quite honestly the biggest reason is that it just doesn't look like a real 1950s bedroom. Obviously I'm not going to be going precisely accurate, but I would like it to look a little more accurate to an actual 50s bedroom than it does currently. I've been wanting to change this wall for at least a year, it's been a long time that I've wanted to do this, and originally I wanted to put on some vintage styled wallpaper, however that opened the whole can of worms of how do you apply wallpaper to a textile your wall and that was just gonna be a whole difficult process. I also had a devil of a time finding vintage style wallpapers that I actually liked and also I could afford and also would actually ship to Canada. So I have decided to paint my wall to look like it has wallpaper on it. Is this going to be very difficult? Yes. Is this going to be very time consuming? Yes. However, I think that the result will be very beautiful if I managed to do it properly. So today I went to Benjamin Moore and got quite a few different paint swatches. It's kind of difficult to tell, but my bedroom wall is actually like a very, very light sea foamish kind of color. So I wanted to make sure that whatever colors I chose were appropriate. I decided to go with these two colors. This is pool blue and supple pink. Here is one of my inspiration pictures. This is some actual 1940s wallpaper. You may be wondering why 1940s and not 1950s. Well, a 1950s bedroom would not necessarily be perfectly up to date and perfectly stylish with brand new wallpaper, so I feel like some 1940s wallpaper is appropriate. And also I really like 1940s wallpaper, like how beautiful is that? So I'm going to be using this blue as the background color, and then I'm going to be doing some sort of gradient roses that are sort of blending from pink to white. So I'm just going to use some white wall paint that's kicking around the house already and and this pink. I really really like roses and I also really like daisies. And this wallpaper actually has pink roses and daisies so it's perfect. For the other colors like the leaves and stuff I'm just going to be taking the blue color and sort of mixing in some of my regular art acrylics to change the color a little bit. So my accent wall is not particularly gigantic so I didn't need to get that much paint. I have just ordered a quart of the blue and a sample size can of the pink. So we're going to be taking down everything that is currently on that wall, filling in some holes that there might be from nails or thumbtacks, and then measuring things out and then painting it, it's going to be a whole process. I really like the pattern of the flowers being in vertical lines, however that is going to take a lot of measurement. Making sure all the lines are parallel and drawing some sort of parameters for where the roses should stay within. So I'll come back to you and we can start this grand journey once I have the paint. The next day. I now have the paint that I need, but before we can start going into all of that and figuring out stencils, how I'm gonna paint all the flowers and everything, we need to take down my current wall situation. I'm gonna be trying to save the clippings that I really, really like that I might want to use for something else, and I have like some vintage advertisements and stuff on here, so I want to keep those. So I'm going to start taking down over here. Okay, so this is weird. My wall is blank for the first time in at least three years. As you can see, it is like beige-ish. It's not actually the same color as the rest of my wall because when I painted the rest of this room, I still had all of that wallpaper situation up and I didn't want to like take it down and put it back up because that would be like impossible. So I do just need to go over it once more to be sure that there's no little pieces of tape that I've missed. And there's currently a whack of just like paper and all kinds of scraps down there, so. I'm going to get a trash bag to put all of this in um, and then I'll just like use that to take it down to the recycling. And then I'll vacuum and we can start filling in some little nail holes that are in this wall. So yeah, I'm going to get cleaning up this disaster. Thank you. 
All right, I've cleaned up the floor, I vacuumed, and now I'm going to use this wall putty to fill in some holes. I have filled in the holes. You can probably sort of see how it's a little more matte on those spots. Now I have this big can of some paint that we used at our house a while ago. I also have a drop sheet and some painter's tape, and I'm going to tape the edges of this drop sheet to the edges, like the bottom of the wall. Now the reason I'm using this paint is because I don't have a primer, but I think that this will work for that. I don't have tons of my blue paint, so I only want to need to do one coat of this, so this paint is sort of like a light dusty blue situation so I think that that'll be a good color to put underneath this. So I'm going to tape up the walls and start painting. I've gotten this sort of primer coat on. The light is starting to leave. It's golden hour right now, but after this dries for a couple hours, I think I'm going to start going in with the blue. And then we'll pick it up tomorrow and start all of the complicated patterny stuff. It is the next day and the paint has dried, but there's a few spots that I need to touch up a little bit. So I'm just going to go over those spots real quick, let them dry a little bit, and then we can start sort of drawing the markings for where all of the lines and patterning is going to go. All right, now that I've done that, I'm going to measure and mark out all of the lines. This is probably going to take an incredibly long time making sure that I get all the lines straight and everything. I think I'm going to go with 12 inches between each line. So 12 inches from the center of one line to the center of the next. And I want the thicker lines to be six inches wide and then probably just like one inch wide for the thinner ones. So this is gonna take a while. Let's get started. So I was like measuring along the baseboard and along the ceiling to like mark where I need to draw the vertical lines between if that makes sense and I would measure like six inches from the side of the wall on the top and six inches on the baseboard and then they don't match up vertically and I was so confused and my dad used to work in construction so I asked him what the heck is going on. So basically our house is kind of falling over. <laughs> it's not literally falling over, but like it's on a hill, so it's just like kind of weird and slanted. There's some weird stuff going on. There's not perfect right angles on this wall. So even if I measure along the baseboard and the ceiling exactly the same, they don't match up. So I don't really know what to do. I think I'm just gonna like kind of eyeball it because that's the best I can do and it just... <sighs> really sucks. So they might be kind of not perfectly parallel lines and they might be very, 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 very not parallel lines. I'm gonna try drawing some parallel lines and hope it goes well. It is now time to paint the leaves. I'm gonna paint all the leaves first before I put the roses on top. So I have mixed together this color, which probably looks incredibly similar to the wall to you. I took the blue that I used for the wall and mixed it with a bunch of white and a little bit of black to dull it down a bit. Then after, I believe I'm going to darken this more so that I can use it for sort of like shadows on the leaves. I'm using this brush because I think I can sort of rely on the shape of this a bit to help me get the leaves and that'll sort of help them be consistent also. So I'm just gonna put on my apron again and we'll get painting some leaves.
but I cut him twice today, and then he asked the reason for me. Alright, so it's another day and I finished the first layer of the pattern. I have all of those little leaf shapes. It's very subtle right now. And I don't know if you can see, but I drew the outline of some bigger leaves over top of that. And I'm going to paint them in the same color and then darken a little bit of this as well to sort of like shade them in a little more and make the bigger leaves more detailed. Let's get painting. I finished the base shape for all of those larger leaves and now I'm going to take a really little brush and use this sort of darker color that I used on them to outline them. And I'm also going to paint a little line straight through them to make them look more leafish. It is actually two days later because I was busy yesterday because I started a new job, so that's cool. It is now time to start painting these roses. I have a huge thing of white paint here and also my cute little guy of pink paint. So my plan is to paint the roses in layers starting with the bottom petals of the rose. It'll be like pink in the center and then fade out to white. So as you can see here, I drew like some circles by tracing this bowl so that I can sort of have some parameters to keep the roses in so that they'll be a uniform size. So I'll paint a few nice big petals and I'm gonna do that first layer on all of the stripes, all of the roses, and then I'll move on to the next layer of petals. So I hope that sufficiently explains what I'm going to do so I'm going to get started painting. Alright, the first layer of the roses is absolutely complete and I actually really like the way that they look on their own. Kind of reminds me of... Is it a hibiscus flower I'm thinking of? Anyways, I think they're really pretty, but I think I need to do at least two more layers to make them be roses. Welcome to what I think is going to be the last day of painting this wall. I think I can get it done today, but it is going to be a fair bit of work. It's a little tricky to see on camera, but you can see between the bigger stripes, I did most of like the thinner stripes, so I did a bunch of little rosebuds, but now I need to use like a really thin paintbrush. Where did I put it? A really tiny little paintbrush so I can do some sort of stems on the rosebuds and sort of connect them. That'll make the lines look more complete and obvious. Then I believe the last thing I need to paint is the daisies that I'm going to sort of mix in with the roses. And that part's probably going to take a really long time, but for now, let's just do the rosebud stems. So I finished the stems on all the rosebuds and I was just thinking it would make my life so much easier to do the daisies if I had some sort of stamp. So I am going to try and make a potato stamp that is just in the shape of a daisy. I can dip it in the paint, stamp it on the wall. It'll be so much faster than doing individual brush strokes. I have no idea if I'll be able to do this sufficiently, but let's try. Okay, so the stamp didn't work, and I should have realized that it wouldn't work because this is a textured wall, and the daisy is just flat. So it just kind of like puts paint on the most raised parts of the wall, if that makes sense. So it just doesn't work. So I'm gonna get started doing this by hand, and it's gonna take forever. Play the game, pal. 
I have finished the wall. At least the painting. I really, really like it. I've put my desk and my mirror back in place. However, now I want to put some frames above this. So I have a few things that I want to put in frames, like a fair bit of vintage ephemera. In case you don't know, ephemera is basically like any paper thing, like magazines or letters or postcards, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go get the things that I have and we can start putting them together, hanging them up, and then we'll be all done for this wall. And with that, I've completed the first step of turning my bedroom into a 1950s time capsule. I am absolutely thrilled with this wall. I think that it looks better than my wall did before. It matches my aesthetic better than it ever did. It's also more historically accurate. I really like that it's inspired by 1940s wallpaper. The next step in this whole 1950s time capsule situation is going to be some stuff to do with the furniture. I'm going to be changing my desk chair, probably painting the cabinet in the corner, and getting a new lampshade, I don't know, some some other things. Now, I would like to announce that I am changing my upload schedule. I am going to be going from one video a week to a video every other week. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I just started a new job. And even before I started that, I already had a pretty full schedule, so uploading once a week, it was already like a pretty intense schedule, and now it's just gonna be even more, and I don't really think that I can deal with quite once a week. I might every now and then do one a week after the other, but generally from now on you can expect a video every other week. And the videos are always up at Monday at noon Pacific Standard Time. So this project did take me like a really long time. I spent like, what, four days painting this wall? But I think it looks really, really nice and it's going to like last so much better. And also I think it generally is more friendly to houses that are being rented, like my house. Because wallpaper is like a pretty intense process. It's quite a commitment and it's a lot of work to take down. But if you paint a wall, you can always paint over it. So while it is a lot of work, I think it was totally worth it. And I totally think that more people should do this sort of accent wall thing. I know that accent walls are a thing, but making it look like wallpaper, I think is a really fun idea. So let me know if any of you do this, because I'd really like to see. You can DM me on Instagram at Miranda. Miranda double underscore Milner. So I guess that would be it. I'm really happy to have started this process at last and my room's already coming together a lot more just because of this wall. Real quick before I finish off the video, I'd like to mention that I have an Etsy shop called Gwen's Vintage Box where I'm selling vintage and antique curated boxes themed after different colors. So the link will be in the description if you want to check that out. That would be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hey look, it's me on the camera and I look all awesome. Yeah. I want to be in one of your YouTube videos. Just kidding. Well, it's filming uh, right now, so if you really want to be there, you are. I feel like there's something I'm supposed to do, right? That's the thing I was supposed to do.